Hi, everybody. Oh, that was a strange voice. Um, not sure why I did that. I thought I'd make my videos a bit more entertaining. Um, maybe I should start to accept the fact that I am not particularly entertaining. Anyway, uh, today I thought I'd share some resources that I use to make stuff like adventures, dungeons for fantasy OSR games. I am going to be running a real life campaign soon. I plan to set it in an existing campaign setting, specifically Black Marsh. I was told about Black Marsh through this amazing video from this channel called Fumble Table. Uh, I printed it out. It's right here. Uh, and also the map. It's pretty cool. It's all you need, really. I like the terseness of it. I like how you can just place stuff in. You can set a lot of adventures within that setting, which I do like quite a bit. So I was wondering what I should put in that setting, and if only there were a video, perhaps from Fumble Table, a video that detailed the best free D&D starter adventures and how to set them in this campaign setting called Black Marsh. Nah, that doesn't exist. Um, so yeah, here's some stuff. So my first piece of advice might be quite obvious, especially for people who are used to more old school systems like actual retro clones. Delving Deeper, for example, is a retro clone of OD&D. &D. Um, use the rule set, right? Like populating a dungeon. What can be in this room? Uh, what kind of tricks and traps can you find? What monsters will be on what level? Looking through this and kind of giving yourself an idea of what you might be able to put in the adventure. Just from the flavor and from the stuff in the original rule set. Flipping through and even like looking at the equipment list or looking at what kind of like treasures you can find, that can give you a lot. Beast theories as well. Like if I flip to the monster section here um, and I look through the stuff and I was like, hey, wouldn't it be fucked up if I put a Triceratops in this hex? Especially uh, if you're playing something like Black Sword Hack or Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay or something with a lot of specific flavor. You can get a lot of stuff out of the core rulebook that is specific to that flavor. So my first piece of advice is kind of obvious, but you know, don't discount the rulebook. Especially if you have something like OSE, which has advice for building out an adventure. That stuff can be very valuable. So on to less obvious stuff, uh, I would highly recommend Sandbox Generator. It is a generator meant for old school kind of fantasy games. And there's hex generation, you know, like there's encounters per biome, and I wouldn't use this uh, encounters list. I'll just use my own systems. Uh, but the rest is really good. Landmarks, natural, and magic. The stuff for settlements, um, names of the settlement, hamlets, villages, etc., cities, and it goes into a lot of detail, but not too much. I find stuff like Tome of Adventure Design, which gives you all these crazy tables, can get a little too much, a little too overwhelming, a little too hard to use. But this is just enough stuff, I think, for me. I really enjoy the dungeon generation. The dungeon generator actually feels like the AD&D Appendix A dungeon generator to me, but I find it somewhat more usable. I've tried several uh, dungeon generation techniques, and I think this is my favorite one so far. Can create something like this, basically. It also has D100 special rooms, and each one is actually described. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff at the back also for random generators, like uh, if you need a criminal organization, this book has you covered. And like I said, this is not the most crazy thing ever. It just hits the right spot for me, you know? So I like this a lot. I'm using it for my current solo mega dungeon campaign. And I also plan to use it for this upcoming campaign that I have planned. Okay, here's one that most of you probably don't know about. It's Mike's Dungeons by Jeffrey McKinney, the guy who did Carcosa. You might be wondering why it's called Mike's Dungeons when it's made by this guy. Uh, the description on the drive -to RPG page basically says that he uh, used his DeLorean time machine and came back in time, found this guy called Mike and just stole all his dungeons. And it does feel like that. Like, look at these maps. They're just hand-drawn. And there's a lot of stuff that you can just pilfer from in here. So how I would use it is I would literally just flip to a random page and go, okay, uh, there's an ungodly grizzly bear here. There's some giant fire beetles. 
I'll kind of figure out how to fit it into my current campaign and how to make it more thematic to that location that I want to have made. But I might just like steal a bunch of stuff from here directly. A great temple of evil chaos with a bunch of ghouls who will attack anyone not garbed as clerics of evil chaos. The ghouls wear copper bracers on each arm worth a total of 120 GP. Yeah, this stuff is great. It's 78 levels that you can just steal, modify, just use for your own campaign how you will. The other thing about this is I like how simple the maps are. Like, I'm an artist, I think, and I can appreciate good cartography, but this makes it extremely simple and good to map out if you're using player mapping, which I do in my games. And even if you don't, the simplicity of the maps makes it, in my opinion, very, very usable for shamelessly stealing from and combining with other elements and bastardizing and just making it into your own thing. So yeah, strong recommendation for Mike's Dungeons by a guy not Mike. This next book I use quite a bit for my solo games, but also to create stuff for my adventures in group games. And it is called um, End and End and End and End and Treasure by this guy called Liu Gehring, who has decided to torture everyone by making a very usable book have I don't know how many ends. There's a lot of ends. This book is a companion piece to Monster's End, which I have covered on the channel before. It makes it so that you can create treasure really easily. You know how old school games have those treasure hordes where you have to roll like a bajillion dice and you come up with a few coins and some jewels maybe? This makes it far more interesting and far faster. You can get coins, trade goods, artifacts, maps, magic items, and um, as you can see from the side here, the magic items, which is this part, takes up a lot of it. So I like two things about this. You can make treasure really easily, and the treasure that you end up making, uh, if it contains a magic item, can be really interesting. So I'm currently in an OD&D Mega Dungeon campaign run by this guy called Liu Gehring, and uh, yeah, it sounds really familiar, I'm not sure from, uh, from where, but you know. Some of us got some treasure, and one of them was Fist Panoply, a set of 12 rings, each adorned with studs. The two spare rings are far too wide for fingers, but do not fit over the hand. Punches made whilst wearing these rings deal damage as two-handed sword and insulate the wearer from any ill effects from contact with the thing being punched. This led to the wielder of this weapon using it as knuckle dusters and uppercutting a giant through their mouth and out through their head. And a lot of these will lead to adventure hooks, for example the magical staff Basha, which believes that only that which it perceives truly exists, all else is nothing but theory. Basha wants to know everything. But the staffs, staves, staves, are alive and they can overpower the magic user. And it's this whole thing where every single item in this is super interesting. So high recommendation for and 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 treasure by Liu Gehring. Okay, so the title of this video is probably gonna be something like um five crazy books that you can use to generate stuff for your OSR fantasy adventure. Or I I don't know, I don't know what future me is gonna do, but um I might put like my face just pointing at it, like Wojak style, I hope I, hope I don't do that. The point is, uh, I'm thinking for the video title I'm probably gonna put 5 because 5 is a nice number and everything, but honestly these two uh, go together pretty well. So you may have heard of these books, the D30 Sandbox Companion and the D30 DM Companion. They are very good and meant for old school games. and. This one is more for the dungeon stuff, and this one is more for outside wilderness kind of stuff. You do need a D30, which I do have. Uh, played DCC one time, so I have a D30. That's how it works. But yeah, these are great. Um, I do prefer D30 Sandbox Companion and use it way more often. Uh, because I'm mostly you know good for the dungeon stuff with the other books that I just showed. 
so let's cover that in more detail. There's a bunch of stuff in here for like weather, weather events, of course determination. Look at that fucking chart. Bring out my protractor set to play my game of Dungeons and Dragons. Um, yeah, so temple generator, cult generator. Uh, you can get some really crazy results with this. Uh, I showed this to somebody and they pointed out this text here, which I found very funny. There is a 29 in 30 chance the long-term goal of any cult is total world annihilation slash destruction. Uh, so you better roll the d30 and if you get a 1, I guess you are just gonna have this immediate goal. Heraldry generator, uh, coat of arms and stuff. Settlement backgrounds. So I really like this for settlements actually. A bit more than sandbox generator, I think. This and sandbox generator go really well together because you can just kind of come up with a lot more detail here than you can with sandbox generator and it has some generators that are not in sandbox generator like uh, you know methods of torture and execution i've definitely used that one before me saying that probably puts me on a watch list or something um yeah tavern name generator and accommodations features reputation and food just a ton of stuff is really good and d30 dm companion i'm not going to go into too much detail but it's the same stuff, but more for like dungeons. You know, pick these two up. They're real good. One thing I failed to mention is that most of these things are pretty damn cheap. You can get them through Lulu or you can get them through Drive Through RPG. Actually, I'll put a link to where you can get all of these stuff in the description below. But I find these personally very useful for when I need to generate some stuff or I need inspiration. So I hope this video kind of helped you out as well. If you are planning on starting a campaign and you want to make your own adventures. In terms of actually making the adventure, I would recommend Bandit's Keep's uh, adventure design playlist. And that's where I actually learned a lot of how to make adventures. And yeah, that's about it. Um, if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. Hit like and subscribe if you did like the content. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. Uh, see you guys next time. Bye.